Good morning, good morning, everyone. Ow. Update on my back. It's feeling a little bit better. I'm so excited. I am actually flying to Hawaii on Sunday. So it is a good thing that my back is feeling much, much better. Um, also exciting things happening over here. I have learned to, if you can see this up close, I have learned to do um, wire wrapping art and I absolutely love it. I'm still working on it. Um, I'm only gonna get better though, I know that. So, um, and I've already gotten um, some requests for some pieces. So if you guys are actually, I'm very multi-talented obviously. So if you guys want to um, order a piece, let me know, just message me. I am, I have all kinds of crystals. I get them straight from Brazil. Um, I order them offline, um, and I like the, um, like I said, the, the natural pieces like this and, and like this. Um, so if you're interested, just let me know. Okay. I actually did my hair today, guys. That's amazing. That means my back is feeling better. <laughs> All right, I'll wait a couple of minutes. Um, not minutes. I always say minutes, but I don't want to waste the minutes, like seconds. I'll wait a couple seconds. And you know what I forgot to do? I just realized that I forgot to warn people that I'm about to be online. Like, I said I was going to do that. But also, okay, so I did mention that I'm going to Hawaii on, on Sunday, so there's going to be sort of a time change. Not a sort of. There is going to be a time change. Hi, Jen. And um, I am going to try to keep these lives consistent. Um, I have kept up with my commitment to going live every day this week. Yay! Just a little clap for me. Um... Yeah, so I want to continue to do that in Hawaii, so there might be a chance I'll be waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do the lives. <laughs> so um, stay tuned, we will see. Um, I actually noticed that I have an easier time waking up that early when the sun is shining, so I actually don't think that it will be an issue. I think I'll actually want to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, so we'll see. But um, I do want to go live from Hawaii next week, so stay tuned for that. I'll have some beautiful views for you, hopefully. Um, and if you're not following on my social media, obviously you're following me here. But I'm also on Instagram at Justine underscore Luzzy underscore. No, I'm sorry. Justine underscore spiritual underscore coaching. I just changed my name. That's why. Sorry. Um, but that is my handle on Instagram. And also... Um, I actually don't know my Snapchat name, but I'm always, um, I started going on live on Instagram stories, so you can find me there. So I will be posting from Hawaii as well there. Okay? Cool. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, oh, really? Please, let's live there. Okay. I'm not sure what that means, John. <laughs> but anyway. All right. So let me begin. Today, um... Well, let me introduce myself first, right? I always like try to skip over that because people may not know who I am. All right, so my name is Justine Luzzi. I'm a spiritual coach, spiritual teacher. Um, I help people get spiritually connected, empower their intuition, and help heal themselves uh, in order to create a life of emotional freedom, right? That's the, the most key thing, I think, um, is emotional freedom and living a life that feels good to you, right? Um, I also am an intuitive empath. Um, if you don't know what an empath is, I talk about it a lot. It's it's a personality trait, um, maybe not so much a personality trait. I think being a highly sensitive person is a highly, is a um, personality trait, uh, but being an empath is more about um, what your higher self is. Um, so I am an intuitive empath. I'm, I'm very intuitive. Um, naturally. Um, <laughs> I do HSP, which is a highly sensitive person and empath mentorship. And then I also, um, excuse me, do, uh, intuitive healing, mod uh, different intuitive healing modalities, um, such as crystal healing and angel cards. So if you're interested in any of those services, let me know. Um, if this is all completely brand new to you, or it's like going whoosh, over your head, because at one point it would go over my head. Um, let me know, like I said, message me. I always now put my scheduler in the comments after the live if you want to schedule time with me, just to chat free. Um, if we will chat about what these different things are, um, how I could possibly serve you, um, any anything under that tree. Anything under that tree. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today. 
I'm happy. That's what it is. I am extremely happy, and I didn't even meditate yet today. I didn't even do my morning routines yet. I woke up kind of late because I went to bed kind of late. Um, anyway. Okay, so today's topic I want to talk about is um, gaslighting. So if you follow me or any of my posts that you've noticed, I talk a lot about uh, narcissistic abuse. I only do that because I have experienced that, and that's what caused my spiritual awakening about four years ago. Um, I think it's super important because of a lot of reasons. I think a lot of times people don't understand how serious it is. Um, I was embarrassed for many years. Um because I had experienced, I actually experienced PTSD because of it, and um, I thought it was being too sensitive or dramatic or, you know, whatever word you want to insert there, but um, it was real, it was happening to me, and it's very, um, it's a time of a ton of confusion, and it's a time where knowledge is power, and I wish that I did have this knowledge when it was happening to me, um, about this person and some strategies to get out of it alive. Um, I mean, I did get out of it alive, but some things would have been helpful and um, if they were brought to my attention. So I like to talk about it. Um, I like to talk about the healing aspect because it really took me a long time to heal from this. Um, my entire life, I have never really experienced, um, hi, thanks for joining. I've never really experienced any um, serious trauma in my life. I had a really good childhood. Um, the only thing I could probably say is that I wasn't encouraged too much to speak about my feelings, um, but I know that now um, I'm such a feelings person. I'll talk about them all day, every day, if somebody would listen. Um, <laughs> so I have taken that control of my life. Um, but other than that, I really um, haven't experienced any trauma. I have the best mom. I have the best dad. I have the best sister. I, I love them very much. And um, I did not experience any trauma um, in my life. I was given a great life. And for that, I'm very, very blessed. And I have a lot of gratitude. Um, so my mid-20s, when I came across um, this narcissistic person uh, who I thought was my best friend, um, I was thrown for a loop, I guess. Whirlwind loop, whatever. I was turned, my life was turned upside down and I, and usually what happens is it happens really fast and then you don't really understand what happened to you and then afterwards you're dealing with it. I actually dealt with it for four years. Um, I actually probably didn't get to complete forgiveness until about four years if I want, if I'm being completely honest with you guys and I'm always being completely honest, so. Um, it's a lot and a lot of people don't think it's a lot and we didn't even date for four years. We dated for eight months and, um, it just really, really takes a toll on people, especially if you're an empath and especially if you're a nurse, um, I'm sorry, especially if you're a highly sensitive person. Um, we tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, we tend to be a little too trusting. We tend to want to save people, right? Um, that is my thing, right? Um, it made me realize that I am a healer, um, but not, but I can actually use my healing intentions for something good, um, obviously, what I'm doing now, what I do for a living. Um, so, so yeah, so there's just like, there's this whole dynamic, I can talk about it all day, every day, but today I wanted to talk about one aspect of it, and it's called gaslighting, and I've heard the word here and there. Um, and I think it's getting a little bit more popular when it comes to um, the topic of emotional abuse. Um, and a lot of people don't actually know what it is. So I'm going to do my best to explain what it is. Um, so gaslighting is when um, and I want to I'm just trying to make sure that I can articulate my words very clearly. Um, Gaslighting is when um, something is, you know what the truth is and somebody's making you feel um, quote unquote crazy for that truth. Does that make sense? Um, usually it happens with, um, you know, a sociopath or a narcissist saying, um, you know, uh, you know, flirting with a girl in front of your face and then you say, um, you know, please stop flirting with that person. And then he says, well, what are you talking about? Um, it's kind of like pretending that 
what's actually happening is not happening. So it's actually something that's not, it's not reality basically is the gist of it is um, they're not in tune with what's actually happening. Only their, their reality is what is happening from their perspective. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, a lot of the time people gaslight with, um, like I said, that example with flirting with somebody or they say that, um, they say something and then, um, you bring it up later on and they say, oh, well, I never said that knowing in their psyche that they said it, right? Like, they know consciously that they said it. So it's something that's conscious. It's not, like, something that's unconscious. Like, I have the worst memory, right? So if somebody says I said something and they say I don't remember, it's most likely because of my bad memory, but the intention's there, um, whether they're conscious or unconscious. But usually it's a conscious choice to mess with your head um, to make you feel crazy, um, usually to cover up bad behavior. Um... I don't want to say bad because I don't really like using the words good or bad. Um, negative behavior. If that helps. Um, so I was actually, um, for four years, I looked into how to, um, because I actually have, not by choice, but um, a couple of narcissists in my life at this point still, um, not this particular one, but um, there are strategies and techniques in order to... Um, quote unquote, survive. I mean, it's really, you know, and I'll do a live about victim mentality. Um, maybe next week, that's a really good topic um, about victim mentality, because I do believe in victims, but I don't believe in staying in that mentality. And I'll, I'll do a whole another live about that. I can talk about that forever. Um, but um, strategies in order to cope or manage and and, and survive and, and heal and get better um, and deal, basically, um, because that's really what... Um, this is something that falls under the umbrella of what I do is, is spiritual healing. So, um, okay, so let's get into it. So um, they're all going to be kind of similar, like they're all going to kind of mesh into each other. But the other thing, too, is that I want to say is before I go ahead and, and tell you about these, um, I want to talk about when I say the truth, right? So do you guys mind if I take a sip of my coffee? <laughs> It's just sitting here. I could smell it. It smells so good. Just one second. Okay. All right. Anyway, well, let's get back into it. So the truth, right? So what I do as part of my coaching is that I help people find their um, highest self, uh, which is very similar to um, or is the truth, right? So there are two things, right? There are things that are not true, and then there are things that are true. And what I do is I help um, empower people's intuition so they can actually identify the two um, easily, right? So, um, so when I say the truth, the truth, the truth, I'm talking about what feels true from, from a point of intuition, right? So that's what I mean. So, okay, I'll go into them. So the first strategy against gaslighting is um, be defiant or be resilient. Kind of the same thing. So what does this mean? This, is, this means that, like I just said, if we listen to our intuition, we'll know what's true. We will have a clarity piece that we don't have. So as long as whatever is going on, that you understand that it's the truth, stick to the truth. Stick to it. Be resilient. Be defiant. Do not let whatever the gaslighting um, um, abuser is, is saying. Be strong in how you feel. Trust how you feel and go with that. So be defiant. Be resilient. Do not back down. The truth. You know the truth by how it feels, right? So be defiant. Stand strong. That's the first one. The second one is recognize the lack of accountability. Now, what does this mean? <sighs> okay. So a lot of people that, um, the abusers that perform um, the gaslighting, they are usually on the narcissistic, sociopathic, psychopathic scale, right? Um, so with that comes a lot of lack of empathy a lot of the times, and then also a lot of lack of accountability. So they're never really going to be accountable for your actions, and that was something that was um, 
personal to me in my past relationship is everything was my fault. I'm always the one being crazy. I'm always messing this up. I should be responsible for the demise of this, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, They will never take accountability for their parts in relationships. I mean, um, when relationships fail, it's on both parts, right? So I'm not even trying to blame the other person. I'm not trying to say it's their fault. Um, I think it's a combo. I think it's always a combo. I think relationships don't don't work because the dynamic is not working. Um, it's not that you're not working or he's not working. Um, it's the dynamic. So um, you need to be able to, the more that you realize the lack of accountability in them in general, they're just physically not capable um, of be, because of the type of person that they are. Um, they cannot see the truth. They're actually incapable of seeing what you know to be true. So, like I said earlier, they consciously know that they're lying to you, um, but they actually can't, um, they can't um, know that they are, if that makes any sense, and hopefully that does resonate. So basically, lack of accountability, lack of accountability, that you're not gonna take any accountability for how they feel, let alone how you feel, it's just, it's something that as conscious people, we need to accept. Um, okay. And the third thing is, and I actually really like this one because I actually have this conversation with my friend a lot, a close friend of mine, and it is, um, let go of hope. So I usually talk about, and so, okay, so I'm a spirituality coach, right? And the most basic spirituality principle is love and fear are only the only two emotions that actually exist. Everything else can be underneath that umbrella. Um, that is the most simple of simple. So you can either choose love or you can choose fear. Now, when I say all other emotions are either under each umbrella, a lot of people consider hope to be under the love umbrella, right? For me, I actually think... Um, and this is just me and everybody can have a different opinion like my best friend and I, um, I think it's actually under the negative because when we use hope, we actually attach to an outcome that may not happen. And that's where attachment and detachment come in. I think anything that is in an attachment is actually under the negative scale. So that's where it comes in. I think actually a detachment is under the love, under the love umbrella. So we may have hope and I remember I had tremendous hope that this person would change, that this person would realize how much they love me and how much they're hurting me. This person would realize that they're gaslighting. No, it doesn't work that way. I can sit there and hope, 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 but I'm putting all my energy into something that um, may not even happen. And that's, what I, that's the problem that I have with hope, um, is that we can sit there and sit there and sit there, but... Um, it's more of a grasping onto something. Um, and what, and we all know that once you grasp onto something, um, the harder you grasp, the more it's gonna flee, right? So um, what we can do instead of that, just go on a little tangent about hope, is prayer. Because prayer is, um, is pretty much sending good intentions for the greater good of the outcome. So it's not really attaching to anything. It's just um, sending good vibes. And that's okay because it's not attaching to anything. When I pray for this person, that my abuser that I used to be in a relationship with, I don't, I don't think he's going to get better. I don't attach to, I mean, who knows? You know, maybe they will. Um, but I don't attach to the idea that they will. I just there's some comfort in knowing that I'm actually praying for the good in him. And I think that's really valuable and um, more valuable than, than hope. And if we can kind of switch it around, I think things would, um, I think people would, um, their perspectives would change and, and they'll be able to let go more. So, um, so let go of hope, let go of it. Um, that's the third one. Now the fourth one, we just touched on a little bit, detachment, right? But I don't mean just detaching from hope, and I don't mean just detaching from, from the abuser that's gaslighting. I also mean um, you need to detach from their perspective because 
in their mind, that's their reality. Everybody, right? And that's the glorious thing, right? And that's the thing I love about coaching versus therapy. Therapy tends to try to find something that's wrong with you and then just try to, you know, quote unquote, correct it. Um, with coaching, like, it is a opportunity to see different perspectives of different people and then just kind of working around like what feels good to you. Um, so, you know, that's one aspect of the differences, right? So um, detaching from their perspective, that's the beautiful thing in life, right? Everybody's gonna have a different perspective. Even my best friend and I have different perspectives. We have a lot of the same perspectives. But we have different perspectives about different things. Obviously the hope thing, right? But um, the thing is that we need to detach from their perspective. They are um, not, um, you know, you can sit here and tell them, say that they're terrible people, but um, they just, you know, in actuality, they just have a different perspective and think differently than say you, you or I or anyone else. So um, just detaching, but detaching from that perspective. All right, so just to recap, four strategies, um, four. <laughs> four strategies to be able to um, uh, deal with gaslighting or recover, heal, uh, manage. Um, I like heal, heal from gaslighting. Um, Number one, be defiant, be resilient. Know the truth, trust the truth, stick with the truth. Um, two, recognize lack of accountability. Um, people that are psychopaths, narcissists, uh, sociopaths, uh, they do not um, hold themselves accountable. They have lack of empathy and they have lack of accountability. And the more we know that, the better. Uh, number three, let go of hope. Letting go of the 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 tight grasp that they'll change or understand their ways, let it go. Number four, detachment, not detachment just from them, detachment from their perspective. Their perspective is different. My narcissist to this day will not admit that he has ever emotionally abused me. I know that that is the truth and that's all I need, right? So hopefully that helped. God, I hope that helped. It helped me so much when it was going on in my life and I just I just really want to help people recognize what it is. Heal, heal, heal. You are responsible for your healing. I cannot say that enough. You are the creator, you got this. If this resonated with you, I am so, so happy. If you wanna talk more about it, I'm gonna put my link of the calendar, uh, the schedule, it's called Calendly. Uh, you can schedule free time with me to talk about it. Um, to talk about how we can work together. Uh, if you want to talk more about this topic, that works too. Um, I could talk about it all day. Um, so yeah, I'll drop that in the comments. Hopefully I will see you. I'm taking off the weekend. I am flying to Hawaii on Sunday. I want to go live every day in Hawaii. Hopefully I'll have great pics. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram, Justine underscore spiritual underscore coaching. Um, I will have a lot of uh, Instagram stories for you guys. And hopefully... You guys will see me next week. You will. Let me commit to it. You will. I'm going to try to get the times the same, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.